If I was to tell you that picking up just one more rod and reel combo could help you catch more bass on topwater, would you believe me? Probably not. Well, in today's video, I'm going to teach you guys all about a topwater only rod combo that I think every angler needs and how you can use it in your ponds and lakes to catch more bass on every single type of topwater lure. My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. Another giant, another giant. Look at that, y'all. I can't believe what I just caught. Yes! Now, don't get me wrong here. Every single rod and reel can catch a bass out there, but I'm sure there's somebody right now fuming saying, how dare you tell me that I gotta buy more gear to become a better fisherman? I'm good as is. Well, then consider me triple dog dared because I believe in certain fishing situations, it is worth your time and your money to get a dedicated rod and reel that will help you become more efficient and therefore catch more fish. And for top water, I have one combo. Enter the 7.3 medium heavy fast. <laughs> Oh gosh, I've got one. Good grief. Oh, right at the stinking boat. Now, what is it about this rod's length, power, and action that makes it, I would say, the most suited for fishing every type of topwater? And to properly answer that question, we have to talk about three things. The purpose of topwater, the struggles topwater can present to you as the angler, and number three, the five different main styles of topwater lures, and of course, real life footage of me catching bass on all those topwater styles with this exact rod, reel, and line. Now, the purpose of the topwater lure category is really not hidden at all. Matter of fact, it is blatantly said out loud in the name. It is to catch bass that want to feed on top of the water. You've got some that are open water, some that are kind of open water mixed with vegetation or structure, and then you've got some that are total matted vegetation, uh, lay down logs and sticks. There are many different places to throw a topwater lure, but the purpose is still the same, and that is to get bass to come from the water column and eat on the top. But that brings us to the struggles of topwater. The first of those being, I don't care if you are on the bank in a kayak or a boat, oftentimes bass will not hit directly next to you as much as they would on a lure that is subsurface. And especially in dirtier water, bass don't have as much of a clue that you are there. But when it comes to top water, those fish are coming to the very top of the column. And especially if the lure is close to you, it is hard to get a fish to bite in that scenario. So that means you have to make longer than average casts to get fish to bite a top water. Of course, there's anomalies. There are bodies of water where the fish are really, really uh, dumb, I guess, for lack of a better term. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Oh, yeah! But for the most part, a topwater lure requires a further cast. And so that is why I choose a slightly longer than average rod to be able to launch the lure far away from me. Now, the second thing that kind of has to do with far cast is that sometimes bass are in really shallow water, especially shallow vegetation around shallow wood. And therefore, the long cast to get away from you as the angler, whether you're on the bank or in a watercraft, are super, super crucial, especially in clear water. You've got to get your topwater far away from you. And so so that is why I throw a rod that is longer than my average seven foot, seven one, six nine. A seven three is my favorite length for all topwater lures. Now the next struggle that really only applies to the shallow cover is that when you are fishing topwater, the fish come up and eat it. You give them a second, but as you do that, the fish takes back down and takes your topwater hollow belly frog, for example, back down into, into that slop, into the grass, underneath the dock, around some dock cables and posts. And so you have to have a stronger, heavier powered rod to be able to winch those fish, to pull them out of that heavy cover. And talking about the heavy shallow cover, when it comes to topwater lures, I throw nothing but 40 to 65 pound braided line. So we're gonna show you guys here in a second, me catching fish and talking about every single type of topwater lure. And I really think 50 pound braid, if you're gonna throw frogs, it works. If you're gonna throw poppers, it's a little bit overpowered, but it works. If you're gonna throw walking baits, whopper ploppers, all those lures work with 50 pound braid and any kind of reel, gear ratio reel in the sixes to eights. This is the lose Mach 2 combo. And I really think when it comes to, again, the purpose and the struggles, this combo right here is great for every topwater. Now, you might not believe me. You might say, Tyler, but I like to throw a pop on a shorter rod and then a buzz bait on a 7.6 and my frog is like an ultra ultra heavy can I really get by with just one rod combo for every top water my answer is yes and I think if you haven't invested in one you need to so let's get on the water and discuss lure number one that I think fits this rod combo perfectly and that is the hollow belly top water frog If you follow this channel, you know that I love the frog. I love catching bass on it. And on camera, I've caught fish on this exact rod, reel, and line combo. So you can trust me that it works. 
Now again, the reason why I'm choosing a 7.3 rod over any other rod for topwater is because of the frog. I don't care if you're in ponds or lakes, fish eat a frog, and the majority of the time where you have to put the frog to get the bite, you want a longer, more heavy powered rod to get the fish out. But if your main body of water or bodies of water you fish doesn't have a whole lot of shallow wood, shallow grass to get the frog up in, I would recommend a different rod. Now this one can still work, but you're probably gonna lean more into the treble hook topwaters, which is seven foot three, seven foot two medium power is going to be better for the rest of these. But in terms of the frog, which I throw the most, that's why I'm compensating the rod to go more towards the frog in the bigger topwater side, as opposed to the smaller. Now, the first thing about the 7.3 is that it gets you a long cast, longer than a seven foot, longer than a six, six for sure. I know a lot of combos out there come six, six medium heavy. I don't even know why. A seven foot or above is better in every way. And so if you're fishing a big expanse of relatively open grass like this here, long casts help you, but a shorter rod can also help with getting precision casts. For example, let's say that I'm trying to get a frog right in the corner of those pads right there. The longer the rod, the harder that roll cast is to make accurately. But really the biggest thing with this rod, for the frog at least, is the heavy power to set the hook hard and get the fish out of the slop. There's one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get out of there. Get out of there and get in this boat. Boom, that's why the 7.3 medium heavy, my friends. Not a big one, but look at the proportions. That thing is a, as I've been saying lately, a stump. Only a pound and a half, but gosh, is it thick. That was awesome. And with any other rod that is less powered and shorter, I would have had a harder time getting that fish out of this stuff right here that I call the slop. Good grief. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. Get in here. Get in here. Power pull down. Oh my goodness, let's go, let's go. Get in this boat, yes sir. That right there is stinking fun on the top water. Frog, who doesn't love that? Fish just absolutely catapulted out of the grass for this top water. <clears throat> I'm having fun. See a friend? And all this stuff right here, it's hard to get a lure and a fish that's fighting for its life. And that is exactly why I throw the medium heavy power rod. Gosh, that one came out of nowhere. Oh, and he got me, so, is he still on there? He's still on there, but I'm stuck on, oh, I'm stuck on a reed. There we go, come on, pull out of there, pull out of there, yes, sir. Got him, got him, oh, yes. We're having fun. Yeah, we're having fun. <laughs> See, that's exactly how you want to get him right there. Roof of the mouth, strong hook set, seven, three, medium heavy. Let's move on to talk about top water number two. And the first thing you've got to understand about the walking bait is that long casts really benefit this lure. So that's why the 7.3 is a better rod than a 6.10, a 7 foot. Can you still bomb it out there with shorter rods? You can. That's like 70 yards. And the reason why this bait excels because of long casts is because you can cover as much water as possible. Just based on pure mathematics, the shorter the cast, the less water you're covering. And so if I make long bomb casts over deep underwater points, over grass flats, a grass edge, flooded trees and timber, whatever the situation is where the bass are living, a longer cast will benefit you. Now, really the only way to retrieve this lure is by reeling in your slack and popping your rod tip down. And that makes the bait go left, right, left, Right, and every time I go down with my rod tip, I'm reeling in all the slack that I pulled from the tip of the rod. And so because the action is fully dependent on you as the angler, the rod really has nothing to do with it. So you can throw a walking bait on many rods. You just have to understand if the tip here is a little bit stronger than a medium or a medium light, you can't just jerk it like this really hard because it's gonna pull the top water too much. So you've gotta learn, just like the top water frog, the finesse movements of the, of the twitching of the rod to get that lure to go perfectly side to side. And as this is the first top water that has treble hooks on our list, there's gonna be a few more. You have to compensate your hook set because you're using such a heavy power rod and the 50 pound braided line. This bait here has three treble hooks. You don't need a hook set. And especially if the fish comes up and thrashes at it, oftentimes they're gonna hook themselves. So all you've gotta do is give them a little bit of a lean, keep up the pressure, and you're gonna land the vast majority of fish you get to bite the top water walking bait. Gosh, cheapers, cheapers, big one, big one, holy cow. Holy smokes, on the walking topwater, baby. As you can tell, I didn't really set the hook that hard. Just kind of leaned into him. Oh my gosh, what a big one. What a stinking big one. Oh, we got so many fish with him too. 
There's so many fish down there. How do I grab them? Yes, sir. Hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Had to do the old fashioned gill plate. But that right there is a beautiful fish on the walking top water with our 7 3. You can get him heavy. Thank you, buddy, for playing along. Mr. Three and a Half Pounder, Mr. Chunk Monkey. And speaking of chunking, let's chunk another one out there, baby. Gosh, right at the stinking boat. Holy cow. Whoa. Hello. 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 Good grief. <laughs> Again, no need for a real hook set. Just a lean into him and get in the boat. Yes, sir. Well, with the second top water out of the way, let's talk about number three you can throw on this rod combo and catch fish like this, and that is the top water plopper. And as you guys can probably hear, we are throwing the plopper style category. And of course, this one can be thrown as well on the 7.3 medium heavy. Now, there's many different sizes of whopper plopper style baits. The company that I'm sponsored by, Mock, has the Mock Patroller. And that is a smaller plopper style that's great for really uh, shallow water, calm water. But especially for the kind of ripple and wind we have on this body of water, I want to throw the bigger styles of plopper. And this rod can handle them all. And just like the walking bait, the hook set is very, very similar in that you don't really need one. You get the bite it has big treble hooks on there and all you do is lean into those fish just like this should be a bass here see if i can call my shot oh and i can call my shot i told you guys now i promise you might not believe me but that was the first time i said that line <laughs> nice oh i'm trying to be too fancy over here talking to the camera gosh dang it well, the reason why I knew that was going to be a fish is because that was a beautiful cast right to the edge of a drop off next to a little patch of underwater vegetation. Come on, man. Textbook. Oh, 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 there he is. There he is. Yes, sir. Just got the bite and leaned into him. Gosh, what a nice fish. Get in this boat. He got some whopper plopper in his face. Where's your big sister, huh? And when it comes to the retrieve on the plopper style, you can either reel straight back in do a stop and go approach like this, or chop it like this. The plopper style topwater, as you can probably guess at this point, benefits greatly from longer casts, which is why I choose this rod. Let's talk about the final topwater category being the buzz bait. Now, one thing I can say about the buzz bait is that there is no other topwater category that covers water nearly as quickly or efficiently as the buzz bait. That is surprisingly weedless. Whoa. Ooh, 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 ah, dang it. Go right back at it. Oh, there he is. Oh, it's a pike. It's a pike. I guess the buzz bait's a pike catcher. <laughs> Never gonna complain about catching a fish, but I'm looking for the other green kind. But why is the 7.3 medium heavy the right rod for this? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the right rod, but just like all the other topwaters, it works just fine. It's got the length and the power to make really good long casts, which especially around uh, points, like weed points, weed edges, is really, really crucial. Now, the biggest thing with the buzz bait is starting your retrieve as soon as it hits the water. So many times, I will not switch my hands in midair, although a lot of you guys are saying, just throw left hand retrieve. Well, I could learn to cast left-handed. And because the lure is coming at you already, there's no need for a super tough hook set, but you do have to kind of give them a good strong lean to get those fish in the boat or to the bank. Got to keep the rod tip high as well with the buzz bait until at least, you know, halfway back to you. And then you can lower the rod tip and slow the bait down. But you need to have that blade chopping the top of the water. Otherwise it just becomes kind of a spinnerbait. Oh my God. Oh, another pike. Come on. A few main characteristics about the popper style is that they are normally a smaller than average topwater. Usually the smallest ones are your tiny poppers. I caught my personal best on a popper a long time ago. Oh, no way. I let my popper sit out the, okay, this is a teaching moment. Oh, and it's a small mouth, so cool. What I was about to talk about is the fact that the popper is a finessier, if that's a word, which means it has to be fished in relatively calm to totally calm water or else the fish probably can't find it. And the little popping nose won't do its job. And not to say that other topwaters couldn't have caught that fish just now, but I made my cast before I started talking, probably was just slowly drifting it and got the bite without even looking. That's how clutch the popper can be in these situations. But something else about the popper is that the hooks on them are usually 
typically a lot smaller wire, thinner diameter. And so the 50 pound braid and the 7.3 medium heavy, it's definitely the heaviest you should go safely on a topwater popper. And I know on the topwater frog and the walking bait, you can kind of give them a little bit of the business, especially the frog, give them all the business. But on the popper, it is the lightest hook set out of all the topwater categories, and especially on 50 pound braid. Again, the casting is going to be fine. The retrieving is going to be fine. But setting the hook, it's going to be a little bit easy to bend the hooks out. So the hook set barely takes any strength at all. Let me show you. Oh gosh, I've got one. I've got one. Oh yes, you almost can't even like worry about your retrieve at all. Yellow, what a nice one. What a nice popper bass. Yes, sir. Beautiful green largemouth. And again, that bite came when I was almost not even retrieving it at all. Sorry about the bad lighting, but a beautiful, beautiful northern fish. I love this. But the best retrieve on a popper is just a simple pop, pop, pop. Varying your speed to find out how fast the bass on your body of water want it. And that should be a fish. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. I was about to go pop it again and I thought, you know what? This area looks way too juicy. I'm just going to let it sit there. And then letting it sit there, got myself a beautiful one. Oh, you got me stuck in some grass. Get me in. Come on. Come on. There you go. There you go. There you go. Get up. Chunky monkey. And all this stuff right here, all this is cabbage. That's what I've been fishing the popper around. Making very precise casts to make sure that the popper doesn't get stuck during the retrieve in the grass. But of course, when a fish bites it, he does whatever he wants. Now, not only do I believe this is the perfect do-it-all topwater rod for you as an angler, it's also the perfect rod for many other techniques. You can throw a jig, a Texas rig, a spinnerbait, a vibrating jig. A whole plethora of lures can be thrown on a 7.3 medium heavy. And so if you wanted to have a whole arsenal of 7.3 medium heavies, I wouldn't blame you. I believe this video really showed that a ton of stuff can be thrown on the same rods and reels. Now, on my channel, are you going to see me throwing a frog on a 7.3 medium heavy that much? Probably not, because if I have all the rods at my disposal, I love throwing a 7.4 heavy, a 7.6 heavy. That's my favorite frogging combo. And on the flip side, am I going to be throwing a popper most of the time on this exact combo? Probably not. I like to throw it on a, a sub 7 foot rod with like 30 to 40 pound braid. If you want to learn more about all the top water lures and how to fish them in detail masterclass format. I made that video and it'll be linked up here in this corner. My name's Tyler. Subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you guys along for the ride and we'll see you next time right here on TRF. Whee! Whee!